Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Animaction. Welcome to a new spin-off of my animated 80s series where, much like I did in my Japanese edition, I'll be looking at the releases from a country other than the US. For this companion series, I'll be staying in the primarily English-speaking world though by focusing my attention across a different ocean and on the UK. I'll be looking at the releases for each year and comparing them to what we were getting here in America, and I'll only be looking at series that we didn't have over on our side of the pond. The one caveat there is that if the series premiered in the UK first, and we got it later, then it'll be highlighted in this series as well. As usual, if you love all things 80s and animated, make sure to like and subscribe, and check me out on Instagram where my tune of the week is Starcom, the US Space Force. So I assume that a lot of you watching this video are already familiar with my US animated 80s series. And to those of you who aren't, welcome. Glad to have you here and thanks for watching. Either way though, I want to mention a few things that'll be different about this series and that one. First, I'm expanding what content I consider for this UK edition to include Super Mario Nation, Claymation, and Stop Motion Animation. In the US series, I only look at traditional animation, but there are a lot more instances of these other types in the UK releases, and I thought they deserved coverage. If you're interested in them on the US side, let me know in the comments and I may try to put together some special episodes. The second difference is in the volume of releases. I'm covering six years in this video, from 1980 to 1985, because in that time frame there were only 37 predominantly UK releases. If this video does well, I'll cover the other 33 releases from the rest of the decade in a follow-up. Now with all that out of the way, on with the video. This first year we're looking at saw four new series premiering on UK TVs in a variety of formats. Aubrey was a traditionally animated series of six minute shorts that lasted for 39 episodes on the public broadcasting station ITV. The show followed the adventures of a small round orange creature named Aubrey and its various inventions. Cockleshell Bay was a stop motion animation that ran in 10 minute episodes, also on ITV, and lasted for 104 episodes over eight seasons. This show centered on the Cockle Twins, Robin and Rosie, after their family moves away from the city to settle in the title's eponymous bay. The Amazing Adventures of Morph was a claymation series about the shape-shifting Morph and his friends through various antics, and aired for 26 episodes, 5 minutes each, on the BBC One. It reminds me a lot of Gumby, who first appeared in the US 20 plus years earlier, though that character had a long hiatus after 1969 and didn't reappear again until 1982, the year after Morph ended. Seems like they owe a lot to each other. And finally in 1980, the UK got a second traditionally animated series in the form of King Rollo, which got 13 five-minute episodes, also on BBC One, about an inept king who leaned on the help of his staff to govern his kingdom. This whole lineup was pretty dissimilar from anything we had at the time in the US, and followed a very different production format than what we saw here as well. Let's see if the episodes get longer in later years. This year brought with it another four series lineup of premieres, and they were mostly traditional animation this time around. The only show this year that wasn't is actually one of the UK's longest running series from the time, Postman Pat. This was a stop motion series that followed the adventures of a carrier for the Royal Mail as he works his route in the picturesque Greendale Valley, helping residents with their problems as he goes. The series got a massive 184 episodes and received new episodes all the way up until March of 2017. The other three shows, all done in traditional animation, included Danger Mouse, which would come to US TVs in 1984, Pigeon Street, and Will o' the Wisp. Danger Mouse followed a series of missions undertaken by the world's greatest and smallest secret agent. It lasted for 89 episodes over 10 seasons on ITV, initially as 5 minute episodes before eventually becoming full 22 minute episodes. Pigeon Street got 13 episodes that clocked in at 15 minutes each, and ran over two seasons on the BBC. The show followed the daily lives of characters living on the titular Pigeon Street, and occasionally also pigeons. Lastly this year came the series Will o' the Wisp, which got 52 five-minute episodes on BBC One across two seasons. The stories were about the title character Willow, unsurprisingly a wisp, and a cast of other characters, both fantastical and normal as they worked against an evil witch to protect the doily woods. Again, other than some action cartoons similar in structure to Danger Mouse, the closest things to these shows we had here were some of the insert sections in shows like Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street. 
UK releases in 1982 numbered even fewer than in previous years, with only Moore and Bunch... With only Moore and Bunchton singer. Okay, okay, don't hurt yourself. With only Moore and Bunchton singer, Super Ted, and Will Quack Quack premiering this year. Moore and Bunchton singer was a little gray creature of some sort that lived under the cupboards in a family's kitchen, and mostly dealt with him solving problems that required contemplation rather than action. It got 52 five minute episodes between 1982 and 1989 on Channel 4. Super Ted was a 36-episode series running over three seasons. Each episode clocked in at 10 minutes apiece, with the title character a super-powered stuffed bear brought to life by Mother Nature to protect his young owner from the dark. The original series aired on the U.S. on Disney Channel, but we also got a locally made full-length spin-off series from Hanna-Barbera here in 1989 called The Further Adventures of Super Ted. The final series from this year was actually a Welsh-language series called Will Quack Quack, based on a classic children's book. The series, appropriately enough, took place in Wales and followed the daily life of a young duck and his friends. It got 35-minute episodes originally on the Wales public broadcasting channel S4C, but dubbed into English and aired on ITV in 1984. The Disney Channel would run the series here in America as part of its Lunchbox anthology starting in 1989. Things began to pick up in 1983 with the premiere of nine new series in a mix of stop motion, super marionation, claymation, and traditional animation. Stop motion came in the form of the adventures of Portland Bill and Gran. Portland Bill was a lighthouse keeper on Guillemot Rock, protecting ships at sea. The series ran for 25 five-minute episodes on ITV from 1983 to 86. Gran ran for 13 episodes, also five minutes each, on the BBC, following an adventurous grandmother and her grandson Jim as they get into various exciting scenarios. Claymation this year was represented by Moss Chops, running for 13 11-minute episodes on ITV. It told the story of several dinosaur friends adventuring all throughout prehistory. Super Marionation got a new series from the original Thunderbirds creators Gary Anderson and Christopher Burr. Terrahawks followed a team of brave pilots defending Earth from an alien invasion using advanced weapons and vehicles. The other five series that released this year were traditional animation, and consisted of Banana Man, Doris, Henry's Cat, The Little Miss Show, and Victor and Maria. The superpowered hero Banana Man, alter ego of the young Eric Twinge, got 40 episodes lasting 5 minutes each, airing on the BBC between 1983 and 1986. This series also came to Nickelodeon in the US in 1985. Also, similar to 1989's movie Big, when in his Banana Man form, the main character had a romantic relationship with an adult newswoman named Fiona, which, again like Big, was kinda creepy. Doris, on the other hand, was about the daily hijinks of the cat Doris and her feline friends, animated in a paper cutout style. It ran from 1983 to 1985 on ITV in 40 five-minute episodes. Speaking of cats, Henry's Cat ran on BBC One for 51 episodes, varying in length over its five seasons between four minutes and 15. It was an antics-filled show following Henry's Cat and his friends, and their interactions with an evil sheep, a police bulldog, and a harried farmer. The Little Miss Show was a spin-off of the earlier Mr. Men series from 1974, with each of its episodes highlighting the story of a particular Little Miss. It ran on BBC One until 1987, and some of its episodes got an American redub and were released here on VHS. Finally, this year brought us Victor and Maria, about a young girl and an anthropomorphic polar bear doing good deeds and helping their neighbors. Coming from the same studio that created the earlier King Rolo, it aired in 5-minute episodes on ITV over a 26-episode run. This year almost kept up the pace from the last, with eight series being released. They are comprised of five traditionally animated shows, including The Family Ness, Ferdy the Ant, James the Cat, Rubba Dub Dub and Towser, and three stop-motion series with Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Toddy, The Story of a Doll's House, and The Wind in the Willows. I was hoping that we'd see some regular full-length shows this year, or full-length for Americans at least, but we're starting with The Family Ness, which got 25 five-minute episodes on BBC One, about a Scottish family sharing adventures with a family of Nessies with punny names. Ferdy the Ant was a co-production between Britain and Germany and targeted younger kids with Ferdy and his friends' adventures. This one actually ran as a series of 52 25-minute episodes with simultaneous releases in the UK, Germany, and Australia. 
Some episodes were redubbed into American English and released here in the U.S. by Harmony Gold later in the 80s. So yay, full-length episodes. But then we're right back to shorts with 52 five-minute episodes of James the Cat. Being that this is the third cat-centric series in two years, I can only imagine that kids in the UK are feline-obsessed. But anyway, this one is a day-in-the-life series about James and his friends, which somehow included a Chinese dragon, and it ran on ITV for two seasons. The creators of Pigeon Street were back this year with 25 five-minute episodes of Rub-A-Dub-Dub running on ITV. This one was about Mother Goose finding various items floating in a tub and making that item the focus of the preceding episode. And closing out the traditional animation for the year was Towser, about an intelligent dog and his friends challenging various mythical adversaries. This one started out in Australia, got 26 five-minute episodes in the UK on ITV, and later appeared in a couple of places on US TVs, including Nickelodeon as part of Eureka's Castle and Cartoon Network as part of Small World. Moving on to stop motion, though, this year also saw the release of 10 15-minute episodes of Toddy, the story of a doll's house on the BBC, which sounds pretty hardcore for a kid's show about dolls, and an adaptation of Kenneth Graham's 1908 novel, The Wind in the Willows, which aired as 52 20-minute episodes over four seasons, with an additional 13-episode season spun off as Oh, Mr. Toad on ITV. The Wind in the Willows itself was a spin-off of a 1983 animated feature also. None of the series so far this year found their way to regular airings in the U.S., except, that is, for this last one. Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends made its first on-air appearance this year as a series of five-minute episodes on ITV, and later the U.K.'s version of Nickelodeon, Nick Jr. This series came to U.S. public broadcasting in 1989, and it continued to receive new updated material until 2021. I can't say how it's currently doing in the U.K., but it's still a pretty big property here today. And finally, that brings us to 1985 and the nine series that premiered that year. These premieres included the traditionally animated Alias the Jester, Bill the Minder, The Giddy Game Show, The Little Green Man, and Dog Tanyon and the Three Muska Hounds, the stop-motion series Bertha and Rocky Hollow, and the puppet shows Finger Mouse and Pob's Program. Alias the Jester was 13 10-minute episodes on ITV about a time traveler named Alias stuck in the Middle Ages. Bill the Minder is about a boy and his cousins helping people with their problems, and also ran on ITV as a series of 15 five-minute episodes. The Giddy Game Show was an interactive series for preschoolers that presented them with games and puzzles. It ran for a total of 52 episodes across two seasons, again on ITV. And sticking once more with ITV, The Little Green Man was a 13 10-minute episode series about a young boy and the alien friend that only he can see retelling the story of the alien's appearance on Earth and subsequent return home. Dog Tanyon and the Three Muska Hounds was a take on the story of the Three Musketeers, and was actually a co-production between Spanish and Japanese studios that originally aired in those countries in 1981, before seeing its 26 episodes come to the BBC this year. Moving on to the stop motion, this year brought Bertha, whose 13, 15-minute episodes on BBC One and Two told the story of a sentient piece of manufacturing machinery helping the factory she works in solve production problems. Talk about a show that would be appropriate in today's world with all of its supply chain issues. The second stop-motion show of the year was Rocky Hollow, another series that first aired as a Welsh-language series on Channel S4C in Wales before having its 26 five-minute episodes redubbed into English and aired on ITV. And finally, we'll finish this particular video with something way out of left field for this channel, a pair of puppet shows. And I don't mean puppet shows like the Muppets. I mean the series Finger Mouse, which was about a paper puppet shaped like a mouse playing instruments, and Pob's program, about the character Pob, who lives in the TV and gets visited by various celebrities. Pob got 82 25-minute episodes between 1985 and 1990 on Channel 4, and Finger Mouse ran for 13, 15-minute episodes on BBC One. We had plenty of puppets in the U.S. on Sesame Street and such, but I can't think of any like either of these. So there you go. Everything, not just animation, but I guess all forms of children's programming that was released in the U.K. between 1980 and 1985. I may be a jaded American, or maybe most of these series were targeted at younger audiences, but I'm glad I got what we got here in America over what was on this list. I've always personally preferred traditional animation over any other format, but there were a ton of those released in the UK during this period. 
I limited my research to only shows that originated in the UK for this list, so I'm hoping you got plenty of our series as imports. Maybe there will be more on the 86 to 89 list that catches my attention, but we'll have to see if and when I do that one. I'm curious about how these played out for those of you who watched them back then, though. Was it an endless stream of these shorts throughout the day, or were they put into anthologies or programming blocks? Did I target series that catered to too young a crowd? Let me know if these were an accurate representation of UK TV at the time in the comments section. But on that note, we'll bring this episode to a close. Let me know your thoughts on it below. Should I continue with the second half of the decade, and if so, should I do anything differently? Do those of you who aren't from the UK want to see episodes on these different formats for US releases? I mostly just make these episodes and series based on whatever catches my attention at any given moment, so if there's something specific you want to see, you have to let me know. That being said, make sure to check back later this week for the 1986 episode of the US series. Like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And check me out at other places around the interwebs. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and stay tuned. As in cartoons. Later.